Good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning on this early, early morning. If you're able, please stand with us as we open our worship service with His Mercy is More. song this morning called Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. Uh, it's basically just four straight verses, so when you're comfortable, uh, dive in. The tune is the same for each verse, and uh, as always, focus on the words of this song as it looks to the gospel and to what Christ has done uh, for us. So it's called Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. Yeah. 
Welcome all of you out to our 8 o'clock service. You guys are brave. I think we had 60 people last week in this service, and now there's maybe six. No, a little bit more than that. You guys are brave to get up uh, this early with us and, and uh, kind of get the day started, get this daylight savings time started. Or maybe you're the ones that didn't forget to change the time. So uh, we're, we're glad you're here. Uh, just a few announcements this morning. Uh, a couple that aren't in the bulletin. The first one is, uh, or just one that's not in the bulletin. Uh, Pastor Justin wanted me to mention that downstairs in the kitchen, there are some dishes. Uh, if you've helped provide food or things like that, and you were waiting on getting your dishes back, there's some down in the kitchen. Uh, so be sure to, to grab those because they are kind of piling up. Uh, so grab those dishes down in the kitchen uh, if you have those down there today. Or if you're not sure, go check it out if you're missing some dishes, that kind of thing. Uh, we do want to welcome on the screen there, uh, Bryson and Jenna had their baby. Uh, Liam James Fulkerson, born March 9th, uh, 6 pounds, 1 ounce, 20 inches long, uh, doing well, him and uh, Jenna. And so we just uh, praise the Lord for uh, everything going smoothly there. Welcome, Liam, to our uh, church family. Also, you'll see a few announcements there in the bulletin. Uh, 116 Youth Group tonight at 530 upstairs. Uh, so that'll be a great time for the youth to gather. Also, downstairs tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll be continuing our study of Habits of Grace. We're looking at days 22 to 24 uh, in the study guide, so that'll be a good time of discussion as always. Uh, church work day coming up Saturday, March 27th, uh, beginning at 6.30. There'll be coffee, donuts provided, uh, so be sure to get there at 6.30 if you want to enjoy some of that fellowship uh, with the coffee and donuts, because we'll try to hit the ground running about 7 probably. Uh, also, again, Good Friday service coming up April 7th at 6 p.m., and there'll be kind of a fellowship afterward with popcorn and cookies, so that'll be a great time of, of course, remembering Christ's crucifixion and then enjoying some fellowship afterward. Uh, also, Vacation Bible School, of course, June 14th through the 18th, Big Fish Bay is the theme. Uh, saw several people signed up in the foyer that would like to help, so be sure if you haven't done so yet, sign up in the foyer underneath the TV out there. Uh, if you're interested in helping with VBS, we'd love to have as many uh, hands helping as possible 
uh, as we seek to reach kids in our church and in, in the community uh, with the gospel. And the last one there, of course, is about summer camp. Registration is open. Uh, I think the first week they had a good response. Uh, so be sure if, you, if your children, if your kids from, uh, if they've completed fifth grade up through completed 12th grade, they're interested in camp, get, be sure to register them uh, and get it paid as soon as you can. That way uh, that spot is reserved because we do have limited capacity this year. That is all the announcements I have. So we will turn our attention to our call to worship today. Ephesians 2, 13 to 22. Ephesians 2, beginning there in verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. And might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. In whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for those who are gathered this morning to worship you. We do pray that you'd help us to set our heart and our mind upon you this morning. Um, we do thank you for just the reality that we, we've read here in Ephesians 2 as we looked at this text a few months ago now. Just the fact that you've called us out of darkness. You've taken those of us who were your enemies, who were aliens and strangers. And Lord, by Jesus' death and resurrection for us and our faith in that, you've made us your friends. You've made us your children. You've brought us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And so may we worship you today for the reality of the gospel and, and how we put our faith in that and what you've done, what you've accomplished uh, in us through uh, that good news. So Lord, help us to set our affections upon you today. Be glorified in our time together. And may you receive all the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. I want to invite you to stand. We'll sing a couple more songs. And then I do want to mention that uh, Pastor Kevin, our elder, one of our elders, Kevin Fulkerson, is going to be preaching this morning. Um, some of you, of course, know that the, the Halders are away on vacation. We do want to pray for them uh, as well as they're down in Alabama enjoying some uh, warmer weather, hopefully. And uh, so Kevin's going to be bringing the message. Originally, Pastor Justin and I were going to be gone the week before last uh, to a conference, and it got canceled. So we had Kevin line up to speak. Uh, and so because of just the circumstance, we ended up having him preach this week, and then I'll be bringing the message next week. So after we're done singing, Kevin will come and bring us the word out of Ephesians 6. So let's stand, let's sing together, we believe. <laughs> Yeah. 
faith be more than anthems, greater than the songs we sing in our weakness and temptations. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe. church live out our god will save we believe we believe and the gates of hell will not prevail for the power of god has torn the veil now we know your love will never fail we believe we believe we believe in god the father we believe in jesus christ we believe in the holy spirit and he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. We believe. We believe.
Father, we just thank you for the reality of what you've accomplished for us uh, through Jesus on the cross. Lord, that you sent him to die in our place, to pay the penalty that we owed, and that those of us who put our faith in his death and resurrection have new life, uh, that we have that foundation of, in life that nothing can cause to crumble. So we just praise you this morning for the good news of the gospel. I pray for Kevin as he brings us your word, that you'd give him boldness to speak and that your word would go forth and accomplish what you desire it to do. Help us to be attentive uh, to your word as we worship you. And we just lift uh, this time of, of looking to your word up to you, that you'd speak to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, it's good to be here. It's been a challenging week, uh, but it is, uh, it has been a blessing studying this text and preparing for this morning. And uh, I have to say, I'm sitting down here, uh, keeping my, trying to keep myself calm, but I have to admit, when I heard Pastor Kevin come out of Pastor Aaron's mouth, sweat beads popped up. <laughs> No, no, I'm teasing. It's all right. As you can see, we are going to continue to study uh, from Pastor Justin in Ephesians 6, 5 through 9. Uh, we are on part 5 this morning. The, the title of the message is Submission as Bond Servants and Masters. So, but before we get started, we've been talking a lot in our growth groups on following up on the messages as all growth groups have. And we were talking a lot about submission and where we have to be as believers in submission or to have godly submission. And I wanted to point out, you know, there are, just because we are a born-again believer does not mean that we are going to submit. And Because uh, there are born-again believers who are adrift. There are born-again believers who are struggling with habitual sin. Uh, we all go through different stages in life. And that born-again believer who is drifting, they will be struggling in trials. They will struggle with a lack of faith. They will be caught up in the things of this world. They'll be caught up into temptations. And they will have fleshly responses when the pressure is on. And a born-again believer who is drifting from the Lord, they will definitely struggle with submission. And a born-again believer, on the contrast, a born-again believer who is walking with the Spirit of God, who is waking up and studying the Scriptures or reading verses or as they travel, who are spending time in prayer and communion with God, they will go through trials and they will glorify Christ. Um, they will flee from the things of this world and its temptations as Joseph, Joseph fleed Potiphar's wife. They will have a guard over their mouth. They will, they will be able to call back on scriptures when needed as Psalms 119.11 tells us to. And for sure, a born-again believer who is walking with the Spirit will be able to submit in our relationships here. Pastor Justin has shared with us the biblical definition of submission and went over the importance of, of this being key in our relationships. The Bible goes into great detail on us submitting one to another. Submission in the church, especially in the church, uh, submission within the marriage, submission within the family, and now this morning we're going to take a look at what Paul has penned here in Ephesians 6, 5-9 through 9, on the master-slave relationship. We're going to talk about what this text means, and then we're going to apply this text to the relationship we have today with our employer-employee. Before we get started, if I want to, I want to clarify that uh, before we get into the meaning of the scriptures, that I am in no way, shape, or form condoning slavery. As we talk about the slavery of the 17th century, 17th, 18th century versus the slavery of Paul's time. But as we begin to examine the text this morning, 
I want to make sure that we understand this passage in reference is in reference to the master bond servant relationship. And there is only one meaning of Ephesians 6, 5 through 9, but it is applicable to ourselves. Slavery in Paul's time, it was common, it was prominent in the ancient world. And there are some things that we need to talk about on the slavery. The slavery, as we know, in the 17th, 18th century, it was much, much different than the slavery of Paul's time. The slavery of Paul's time was much like our employer-employee relationship, excluding the abuses. And there were abuses. Anytime you have one uh, person or, or human over another person in authoritative position, there are going to be abuses. But people would actually, in Paul's time, people would actually sell themselves into slavery for it a period of time. They would do this to either pay off a family's debt, they would do this for financial gain, they would come into that home and they would serve the people of the home. Uh, another way a person would become a slave is if they stole something and they got caught. Uh, if they could not make restita restitution, then that person would become the property of the per person he stole from until everything was paid back. Poor foreigners, they would come into the country or, or wherever it would be, and they would sell themselves into slavery to, so that they would have food, clothing, and shelter. But the, seventh, but the slavery of the 17th century, 17th, 18th century, was sin. This slavery were, was where humans were stolen from their country, where humans were, were took from their families and they were sold into slavery for gain, for profit. Uh, families were ripped apart, um, and it was, it was clearly sin. Exodus 21, 16 says, For whoever steals a man and sells him, and anyone found in possession of him, shall be put to death. So this slavery was, uh, there was a lot of abuse in this slavery. It was, it was bad. But back to our employer-employee relationship of today, in thinking about this relationship we have at our workplaces, there, are, there can be so many different agendas on both sides that can be the recipe for a hostile work environment. Some employers want more, more production, better commitment, more efficiency, less pay, less hours for larger profit. And I'm not saying that more profit or being more efficient is a bad thing. But some owners, unfortunately, view their employees as a necessary evil and view them with distrust. Some owners, managers, think that their employees are trying to take advantage of them at every opportunity. However, we all know that if we invest in our employees and we, we build on that relationship that Paul is talking about here in Ephesians 6 uh, that we will that employees will take ownership of their job I remember back many years ago probably 20 25 years ago maybe I was at peerless pottery and I remember the philosophy of the owners at that time and the owners at that uh, company had a philosophy that a mad employee was a more productive employee and we know that's not right. Uh, thankfully, this old school philosophy is slowly being proved to be more of a detriment to the workforce and productivity. And I know with my current employer, where I am employed now, that employees are viewed as the, the company's greatest asset. And that is from the top down. Uh, they definitely appreciate their employees. There is a constant direction from the CEO, our president, and the COO of our company to serve the employees as we manage the company, which is servant le leadership. So I have to say, in thinking of that, you know, owners, managers, supervisors, we are to serve our employees. How as to the Lord? 
Um, Christ set that perfect example for us as he washed his disciples' feet, didn't he? So in thinking that, on the flip side, now when it comes to employees, some employees, they want less work, less stress, less hours, better benefits, and definitely more money, right? Um, some employees spend time comparing paychecks, trying to ponder work off on others, gossiping, stretching out breaks, lunches, and at times, breeding discontent. This type of atmosphere can be a cancer, a cancer, that's cancer and cause mix. It can be a cancer and cause division, which is hard on morale. And we've all seen it. We've all seen it at our workplaces. Um, this is not good since most of the, most people spend more time with their coworkers than they do at home with their families. I think, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years back, the average work week for an employee was 40 hours a week. Then it jumped to, to 50 hours a week. Today, I don't even know. It has to be 50 plus a week. But as we continue this discussion on submission, we all know it is a strong power word. And it has a negative connotation in our communities and our culture. And I know submission is a key ingredient to a successful relationship, whether it is in our home, whether it's with uh, our friends, our church, our neighbors, uh, with co-workers as we interact one to another. True godly submission is not possible apart from Christ. And this is why we must first be born again believer. And we must be walking with the Spirit of God to submit one to another. The biblical submission for a born-again believer is the willful submission to God and His Word due to the ongoing filling of the Holy Spirit. So how do we as believers have that ongoing filling of the Holy Spirit? Some of that we're going to talk about today. And... Um, so if you would, uh, please stand with me as we read the text. We are in Ephesians 6, verses 5 through 9. Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bondservant or is free. Masters, do the same to them and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can come together, that we can come to your house so freely that we might encourage each other to love and good deeds that we might look at your word uh, take your word father and apply it to our lives uh, that we may leave this place today and this upcoming week uh, whether it is in our homes or at our job sites father as we interact with people that we would uh, ask ourselves are we submissive uh, do we have godly submission in our lives and uh, i just pray that uh, you would bless our time that you would give me the freedom of speech as uh, we go through your word this morning, Father. We thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. <clears throat> so, the command here in verse 5 is to subordinates. Um, and thankfully, the Lord gives us clear instruction on what being a submissive subordinate is. Uh, obey your earthly mas masters. The first duty of employees is to obey their masters. But first and foremost, it's, it's interesting that he reminds us of our standing by calling us bond servants. Uh, we all know the term servants here refers to Christian slaves, but we can apply these words to the Christian employee today. Uh, like with all the rest of the relational texts and examples, 
we are to obey the scriptures for the glory of Christ. Right? You are to, we are to work hard at your job, not to get ahead, but to glory, but to glorify the Lord. Yes, I understand. I mean, I, I go to work to support uh, Mary Lou and Adam. I support my family. That's why I go to work. But ultimately, we were created to glorify the Lord. That's, that's what we were created for. Uh, the term be obedient literally means to hear under or to listen from a subordinate position in compliance with what is said is expected and intended. To obey is carrying out of the word and the will of another person, especially the will of God. I mean, let's be honest here. It's not easy to submit some, sometimes, is it? You know, especially at work. I mean, you have some bosses who uh, are arrogant, obnoxious, can be a jerk. Um, but that doesn't mean you don't submit. Why? We submit because we are trying to glorify Christ, right? Sometimes, I mean, we are the only uh, Bible people see. We are the only Christ people see. Um, you know, there's times in my life when I struggle submitting. Um, usually when I agree with everything I'm being told, I don't have a problem. But when I don't agree with what I'm being told, there's a little bit of a struggle, right? Uh, we all face that. Uh, we're going to take a look at how to fulfill this command as subordinates. Uh, Paul gives us clear instruction on what a believing subordinate is to do and what not to do. Uh, we are to submit with fear and trembling. So we, Scripture says we are to submit to our boss with fear and trembling. Uh, at first glance here, when we hear fear and trembling... I have this mental image of a person being cowed down in a corner, shaking and scared to death. Uh, I struggle a little bit with that. Uh, the meaning, the actual meaning of this text is a sense of awe and reverence generated by the incredible truth that we, as believers, we are privileged to Christ. And for a moment in time that he has ordained that we serve men as slaves. The word fear here has nothing to do with an emotion, but does convey a positive sense describing respect and reverence for God the Father. As we interact with our employer, we must remember that we are representing the Lord Jesus Christ, right? That's what we're here for, to glorify God the Father. Some of you might be thinking, you don't know my boss. No, maybe I don't. But I know the Savior. I understand the intent of this passage, which is to obey your employer out of respect and reverence for God the Father. So how are we to do this? We are to do this, Scripture says, with a sincerity of heart. The best way to serve Christ is to live out his word. Sounds easy, doesn't it? To live out his word. James 1.22 tells us, which I love the book of James. James 1.22 tells us to prove yourselves doers of the word, not merely hearers like those who delude themselves. That is a challenge for us to be fruitful, to prove yourselves doers, not merely uh, doers, or not merely hearers like those who delude themselves. That is a reference to the lost. So since we are to do all things with the sincerity of a heart, what if our co-workers were um, interviewed and asked, what kind of testimony do we have before them? What would they say? Would they say that we are obedient to our employer? Would they say that we grumble and complain? Would they say that we pad the clock? As we are interacting with our boss or employer and are walking with Christ, things are different when the pressure is on. I've told Mary Lou numerous times in the past that uh, when I am walking with Christ and are in communion with him, um, things of this world don't affect me so much. You know, I am stronger when I 
when I face trials and tribulations. I'm, I'm stronger when, when uh, I am attacked by Satan. Throughout this past week, as I was uh, preparing for this, obviously with Liam being born, you know, there was many distractions. There was many distractions at work. Uh, and I told Pastor Aaron yesterday, I called him and we were talking about different things, and I said, you know, it's amazing how many times I've been attacked by Satan this past week. Uh, he tries to trip us up. But, you know, when you are walking in the Spirit and, and thinking on the eternal, uh, we are much stronger, and we do glorify Christ when, when we are there. But just being born again is not enough for us to glorify him. He requires so much more of us. And I'm not talking about salvation, but am talking about sanctification. Uh, we, are, we are to be living examples of Christ. So I ask the question again, are you a living example of Christ? Uh, no matter what situation you find yourself in, at work, no matter how hard it is, right? We can always look to the Apostle Paul. Philippians 4.13 tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That passage has to, the context of that passage deals with contentment. Contentment no matter what situ situation we find ourselves in. You can look to the faithfulness of Paul, Right? Paul set such a godly example for us. The only way to live out his word is to be walking with the Spirit. To help us to obey with a sincere heart, Paul now tells us what not to do. Not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants. I have a story I would like to read, just a short story. So if you could, uh, be attentive or I, I will lose you in the story. And it, it is a good story, an illustration of an eye service or a people pleaser. <clears throat> I saw two boys at work addressing envelopes, or rather one was at work while the other, with his pen in hand, was looking out the window. Their employer was seated nearby, and when he caught my eye, he smiled. Which of the two boys is the better workman, the most valued, do you think? He asked in a low voice. The one at work, I suppose, I rejoined. No, sir, that lad who is looking from the window does so because he thinks there's no harm in it. Does it, you see, under my eyes? On the other hand, while my eye is on them, the other boy who is most industrious, but I find that in my absence, he does nothing. So, you see, he adds deceit to his fault. I would not trust him out of my sight. It seems to me that neither of them is worth much. To be sure, came the immediate answer, a boy who attended to his duties at all time would be best. But a boy who renders eye service merely, who cannot be trusted to work without watching, is not to be tolerated. You know, they say that having character is doing what is right when no one is looking. So I ask, do you have character when your boss is not around? Do you badmouth him or the company when he isn't there? Do you work the same pace as if he was standing there? Do you take advantage of the breaks, the lunches? You know, in addition to the command for us to obey our earthly masters, Paul tells us to do, with a, do this with a whole heart, a heart that is pleasing to God the Father, even when those relationships aren't the best, even when we are called to do something that is hard. Service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man. You know, we must have a heart of service. Why? Because this passage tells us that we are serving each other as to the Lord. Whether we are serving here at the church, in our homes, serving our family, or we are serving at work. 
we all tend to focus on the here and now, the things that are in front of us, the things that are happening uh, uh, right, right here and now. Uh, for us to serve as to the Lord, we must have the correct mindset, and we must be focused on the eternal and not what we see in front of us. But knowing, Scripture says, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this will receive back from the Lord. Um, this is sometimes confused with the idea of karma, though it is not the same thing. Karma is a, karma is a belief in Eastern religions that everything one does does come back to them. I don't believe in karma. Um, and that is not what Paul, what Paul is talking about. Furthermore, karma is not mentioned anywhere in the scriptures. The scripture teaches those who serve others are rewarded by the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, he may bless here and now on earth, and he may also store up rewards for us when we go home. But however, not all of this instructions uh, that we're looking at this morning are for the bond servants or the employees. Um, Paul now turns his attention to the masters or to the employers. Paul pulls no punches here with two bold statements telling the, master, the masters how to treat their bond servants and how not to treat them. In verse 9, verse 9, he goes on to say, masters, do the same to them. And stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and that there is no partiality with him. So how to treat them? They are to treat their servants in the same way. We know in the workplace, this is a two-way relationship that demands mutual respect. Sincerity of heart. And goodwill. Uh, guess what? Managers, supervisors, owners, if you own your company, just because someone owns a company or is in a position of authority doesn't give them the right to act in a manner that is not worthy of the Lord. As we are representing Christ at our company, God doesn't care who you are, how many degrees you have. How much you are worth or how much earthly influence you have. People have struggled with authority and power within the workplaces for centuries. Uh, Paul's exhortation is the same for the master to slave, employer to employee. Our attitudes and actions as we interact with each other are to be governed by our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So how are you, how, are, how is your interaction with your employees, your coworkers? You know, is the foundation of your interaction, is it love? You know, and you might say, why would you say love? Uh, it's a beautiful thing when you take time to meditate on the two greatest commandments we have, right? We are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love being the foundation. The second is we are to love our neighbor as ourself. Uh, obviously, we have no problem loving ourselves. Paul, and this is why Paul tells us, do not threaten the servant. The, masters, the master was to use his authority in a way that did not operate in a threatening manner. The Christian owner was to treat their slaves with respect as we are to treat our employees with respect as to the Lord. So what does it look like? You know, as I sat and I thought about, you know, what does it look like? How do you show your employees you respect them? And this is not everything, but just some thoughts. You know, you show your own work ethic. Employees do not respect a lazy boss. Uh, be consistent. Uh, are you consistent with every employee? People dislike favoritism. Be a firm leader. You must also show grace at times. Admit your wrongs. Apologize when you are wrong. Own it. 
Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone messes up, right? People respect when you own a, a mistake, especially within your, this is a rabbit trail, but especially within your marriage. If you mess up, you say something wrong to your spouse, own it. Apologize to your children as well. Recognize success. Share your success with others. No matter how good you think you are, you can't accomplish anything without a team. If you're successful, someone's behind you, propping you up. It is a team effort. Share your success. Leadership is not for everyone, right? It's hard. It's not for the weary. I've seen so many people over the years strive for authority uh, and or title. Uh, but Paul goes on to remind the masters, uh, thankfully, with God the Father, that there is no partiality. Um, he will not show favor to those with more money, with more earthly in, uh, influence. God judges perfectly and righteously, reminding the masters that godly actions are required for them regardless of their earthly status. Thank the Lord, right? We are all, in the eyes of God, viewed the same. God the Father loves the owner of a multi, multi-billion dollar company if he is just the same as he does a homeless person. Abuse of another in the eyes of God is not excused by a master-slave relationship nor by an employer-employee relationship. The teachings here in verses <clears throat> 5 through 9 fits well with Paul's similar teaching on mutual submission that Pastor Justin has been sharing, <clears throat> excuse me, sharing with us over the past several weeks. So in closing this morning, I want to encourage you, encourage you to examine your own hearts to see where you stand before the Lord. Examine yourself. Ask yourself, where, where would you rate on a scale of 1 to 10? Do you think you're a 6? Maybe an 8 or a 9? How about this? Instead of you examining yourself, how about you go to your spouse? Ask your spouse to give you an honest answer. How submissive are you to live with? Children, ask your parents. How submissive are you when your parents ask you to do something, tell you to do this or, or that different? Do you have a rebellious look on your face? Ask your boss if you are difficult to work with. And maybe owners, ask your employees if you are considerate, polite, compassionate, com compassionate if you show them grace uh, when needed, because life is hard, right? Paul gives such good instructions in all of his writings. I love reading the books of Paul. I love the, the, all of the word, but Paul's writings are just, I just love them. Even in <clears throat> a verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. May God the Father find us living a submissive life that is honoring and glorifying to him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time where we can come together and we can just uh, continue this discussion on submission, Father. Uh, submission within our homes with our spouse. Submission with our children. And submission in general as we interact with each other. And then this morning, Father, as... We look at submission at the workplace. Uh, this, at times, can be very difficult. Just being real. Uh, people have issues at home. They backpack it to work. They carry it to work. But, Father, I pray that we as believers, that we as believers would glorify you in our actions uh, with, as we interact with people at our job sites, Father. And we just thank you, and we praise you, and we just tell you how much we love you, Father. We pray that you would just continue to be with Liam um, 
just continue to uh, be with Jenna as well, Father. We thank you for the good reports. We acknowledge your hand in answered prayers, Father. I do pray that you be with Pastor Justin and Pastor Jenna and just watch over them as well. Go with us this week. Father, show us where we are failing, Lord, that we might repent, that we might change direction, that we would glorify you. We ask all this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. We want to invite you to stand with us as we close out our service today, singing Build My Life. As we think about, we're wrapping up that uh, series about submission. Really, the foundation is having love, love ultimately for God but love for others in the different relationships we have. So may we sing uh, this song with a heart of submission to the Lord and in the various areas that he has us.
for being here today uh, as we worship the Lord, of course, as we think uh, to God's call for us as employers, employees. Uh, may we seek, as we, again, wrap up this series on submission, may we consider the various roles that God has for us and how we can serve one another uh, and ultimately point others to Him. It's all about pointing people to uh, the gospel, to Christ, and as we submit to them, we're submitting ultimately to Christ. Uh, we do want to invite you back again tonight, youth group upstairs, 530. Uh, downstairs, we'll have our uh, study through the Habits of Grace book, days 22 to 24. So we hope to see you guys tonight. If we don't, hope you guys have a blessed week, and we will see you next week. I'll go ahead and close our time in prayer, and then you can be dismissed. Father, we just thank you again for uh, just a time to fellowship together, um, to lift our voices in praise, to sit under your word. And we pray as we go here, as we reflect on today's message as well as this entire series on submission. Lord, just help us to be open and attentive to where we are and the various roles you have us in. And may we seek to lift high the gospel um, in our various relationships with people, that we could um, point them to you, point those who are far from you uh, to the gospel. So Lord, just help us to ultimately submit to you, to serve you, uh, and to point others to your glory. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you guys have a blessed week. Thank you.